Welcome to The Uplift. We've got a great show for you. A great cast of characters as well. Among them, these, a dog traveling across the world on the back of a motorcycle. Got the goggles on. We like that. Also, a young scientist, just nine years old, honored by Yale University, the Ivy League. What did she do to deserve that recognition? We will get into it. Also, a man who gave up a job at a desk for a sled with a lot of dogs. There they are. And a man building something just absolutely massive in his own backyard. Some call it a wild dream. Still, he's chasing it. All of that and more heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see on The Uplift. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopel, and this is The Uplift, the show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes, you at home and me as well here in the studio. We're going to begin with a pair of roommates who found each other in a unique way. Caitlin O'Kane has their story. Last year, Ascari Johnson found himself starting fresh. He was released from San Quentin Prison after more than 20 years, and he had several goals for his new life. One was to live independently. In nearby Oakland, Tyler Jenk was looking for a roommate to share his house. He connected with Ascari through a unique program called the Homecoming Project. The Homecoming Project is a program to place uh, formerly incarcerated people into homes that are potentially a better situation than halfway houses. The program pays their rent and gives them a laptop and a cell phone and guidance to help get started back in uh, society. Ascari is a carpenter by trade and took courses at San Quentin to help prepare for his release. It was his lawyer who told him about the homecoming project. It fit the goals that I set for myself while I was in prison. I kept in touch with a lot of people that, was, that had paroled prior to me. And so I really live vicariously through their lives, the ups and downs, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And so um, having that experience living through them, uh, it helped me prepare for my success even more. Despite coming from different walks of life, the pair had things in common. When you meet somebody, you get a vibe from them, either it's good or bad or somewhere in between. And it was just a good vibe. We had a good sense of humor about the whole situation. The interview went well. I mean, it was just natural. Uh, he's in construction, I'm in construction, so we had that in common. We like sports. So it was like a match made in heaven, so to speak. Another thing they had in common, cooking. But he's, well, Tyler, Tyler doesn't know this, so he, uh -huh. he likes to cook, and I like to cook. But I'd be kind of embarrassed for people to taste my cooking, right? So there was a couple of times when I had cooked something, and I, and I came this close to offering it to him, right? Oh, no. And I was like, nah, if he tastes this, I don't like it. I want you to to tell me the truth or say, no, it's good, it's good. The back room and spit it out. <laughs> the program is run by Impact Justice and funded by Wells Fargo. Impact Justice says formerly incarcerated people are almost 10 times more likely to become homeless than the general population. Providing a safe space for Ascari was a simple way for Tyler to give back. It feels good to, to help, so, you know, happy, happy to help. And like, like I said, Ascari didn't need too much help, but being in construction, you know, he would ask questions. Uh, he could ping ideas off me, job opportunities, what unions, uh, what he, what I thought about um, his job opportunities, and kind of, kind of help out. Ascari landed a job as a contractor within two months of joining the homecoming project. He's moved out of Tyler's place, and he's looking for a home of his own. So there's an old saying: uh, preparation meets opportunity equals success, right? So I've been preparing for this seriously like the last seven years of my incarceration and so when I came home people asked that question all the time what does it feel like and I always said it felt like I've, I've never left it, it was um, a great stepping stone to reach the pinnacle of my success whatever a person you know defines success as but um, yeah I, I wouldn't if, I couldn't have written a better script even though Ascari and Tyler are no longer roommates the impact of their time together is lasting. It's like Tyler opened up his heart, right? But more importantly, he opened up his home, right? To, to a stranger. And I think if more people had that ability to just expand their thinking, just to explore it, I think it'd help society uh, uh, enormously. We all have it, we don't use it enough. Great piece there, moving on to our next one. An introduction to a German Shepherd traveling the world with the goal of helping women. 
She's doing it all on the back of a motorcycle as well. Here's Jamie Yukis with the story. For more than 300 travel days, Moxie and her owner, Just Stone, load up their bike, get their goggles on, and start cruising the open road. 75-pound Moxie isn't in a sidecar or trailer, and that often catches the eye of other drivers. What is the reaction to Moxie on the back of the bike? Uh, people are almost going to get into an accident when they see her. We caught up with the thrill seekers in Los Angeles this week as they trek across the country. Then it's off to South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia. This is more than just an adventure. How did you decide to do this? I wanted a bigger impact. So I was thinking, well, let's ride around the world together. <laughs> and I wanted to do it for a good cause. So I had my eye on the nonprofit Girl Up for a long time, um, and they do leadership and development training for girls in 130 countries. The United Nations founded Girl Up in 2010, dedicated to encouraging and training young women to be leaders. It really spoke to me, and I always think about the fact that if I had that when I was growing up, I feel like I'd be a lot further along in my life. First time on a motorcycle. The pair's journey started last March, but Stone learned how to ride 11 years ago in Africa with her husband Greg as her teacher. It was very anxiety provoking. I'm the only female riding and I have that feeling like people are watching and thinking, oh, why is she riding? She doesn't know how to ride. But soon after, she was hooked and the couple did their first eight month long motorcycle ride together making their way across North and South America until finding a new home in Guatemala. Here we have our new puppy. That's where they first met Moxie. Good girl! Good Wanting to get back on the road with their new best friend, they developed the canine moto cockpit. The three now go roughly around the world. I just like being able to share it with my whole pack and then we get to go together. But you're the leader. I'm the leader. You're 100%. the leader of this pack. Yeah, 100%. I do not like being in the back. I want to be the one who goes through the obstacle first. Obstacles like a herd of bison and a bike crash or two. And while it takes guts to glide through to far-flung places. We made it to the Arctic Ocean. Or Malibu's famous canyon roads, Stone says she gets her fearlessness from her furry sidekick. If it was just me, I would just have my helmet on and wouldn't want to really do it with anybody else. But by having her, she really puts us into the spotlight. I just feel like they always say man's best friend, but she's really, she's really woman's best friend at this point in time. She is. I named her Moxie because I felt like I needed some Moxie in my life. She's not scared of anything. And it's something that I needed in my life because it was something that I struggled with as well. So she inspires you? 100%. And now can inspire others. others. Hopefully, yes. As the saying goes, in life, it's not where you go, but who you travel with. I'd say for these three, it's also about who gets to benefit from the journey. And the answer is we all do. Thank you, Jamie. Coming up, meet the man with a dream that some called wild, but with a little encouragement from others, it's a dream that is coming true. And it was always, what about significant other? What about kids? What about career? What about, what about, what about, what about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we would talk to people who are in their 70s, their 80s. They were, go do it. You have this dream? Go do it. What are you waiting for? Plus a shocked four-year-old. There she is. What's on her mind? We'll tell you after the break. Welcome back to The Uplift. We now have a heartwarming video for you. It shows four-year-old Emery, who knew she was going to be having a new brother or sister. She got a big surprise when her mother showed her a sonogram. Oh, the baby is a lot of them. It is a lot. This is the baby. Mm-hmm. You want to know why it's a lot? Yeah, why? You going to tell her? Because the baby's so big. Because it's two babies. A, a brother and another brother? A brother and a sister. <gasps> For real? Mm hmm Oh, no! <laughs> 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 I thought it was only one you were dying! I didn't know you were dying! We did not. No, no. no. We it was two babies in when mm -hmm. you tell me that it was. Baby brother. Mm -hmm. baby brother and baby 
sister. I can't believe it! I didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is adorable. That might be the most heartwarming of heartwarming videos we have ever showed on this program. Uh, I guarantee it. All right, coming up, a nine-year-old girl set out on a passion project that earned her widespread attention and an invitation from Yale. We're going to top ourselves. Plus, a Minnesota man decided to take a new career path, and that path required a sled. Time now to introduce you to a man from Minnesota who gave up a job at a desk to build a team of rescue dogs. Here's CBS Minnesota's John Lawrenson with his story. On a clear, crisp winter morning, the girls, commands like ha and G echo through the winter air. Say ha, blue ha, Misa ha, the girls. For these Siberian Huskies, those words mean left and right, and it's all the encouragement they need the during the dog days of winter. As soon as I pull those snow hooks, pull the anchors, the quick release, and we're off and running, you don't hear a sound out of them. All right, hike! Jack Christopher is the owner of Silent Run Adventures and the leader of this pack. He gave up a desk job for a sled. <laughs> I'd much rather do this. And companionship. Oh, we didn't forget you. I built my first dog team basically out of rescues. <laughs> They're very friendly. They do great with people. Some of them are a bit shy. <laughs> Just not when they're ready to go. Yeah, put her on the second spot there. Jack now has 26 Siberians. Some weigh 80 pounds or more. All right, hike. Come on, hike it up. Hop, hop. Their strength and durability allow them to trek through Arctic okay. conditions, though this team spends much of its time on Minnesota lakes. The number one musher rule is always dogs first. So they always get watered and fed before I do. Jack has plenty of help with that. This is my guy, Rocket. Um, he is a rescue. I rescued him back in March. Stephanie Dreyer is a self-proclaimed emotional support human for the dogs. The bond that we're making, working together out on the sled, is it's something else. The girls! Proof that the phrase man's best friend applies, even on the frozen tundra. Dogs. I want them to see how much the dogs love what they're doing. They get very excited to go. Does he not miss his indoor desk job just a little bit? I guess not. It's a sweet story. Lovely dogs as well. Moving on to our next story. A nine-year-old girl from New Jersey recently found herself with a very unique hobby, and it earned her national attention and recognition from the Yale University. Here's CBS New York's Bradley Blackburn. It has red and brown wings with black spots, and nine-year-old Bobby Wilson can tell you exactly what it is. A spider that can fly. Last fall, she learned about this invasive species in school and wanted to help. She found a bug spray recipe on TikTok. Good job. I mix water, dish soap, and apple cider vinegar. She was using it outside her New Jersey home when a neighbor called the police. A little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. I don't know what the hell she's doing. It scares me, though. Bobby's mom says it was racial profiling. Those exact words in another town, another state, I could be grieving. Yale University assistant professor Ijoma Opara heard Bobby's story and decided to take this young entomologist under her wing. Oh, yeah, Bobby belongs here. <laughs> Bobby is Yale. <laughs> she invited Bobby to campus to meet scientists who look like her. And Friday, Bobby was back to see the first spotted lanternfly specimens added to the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History collection. Those insects were gathered by Bobby herself. How does it make you feel to know that these bugs are going to be in this museum? Happy and proud. A young girl who's flying high and now has the bug for a career in science. She's feeling happy and proud. We're feeling happy and proud as well. That's a lovely piece, Bradley. Thank you very much. When we come back, he was told his dream was wild, but that has not stopped him from following it. What was he creating? We'll tell you.
There are backyard projects, and then there's this from a man in Massachusetts working on something truly massive in his backyard. It's taken him seven years. He knew it would be a feat, given he's never built anything at all before, but nothing has stopped him from following his dream. What was he building? Brooke Silva Braga shows us. You can see what really what we've been building. Wow. I mean, it looks like a boat. It looks like a boat, yeah. And, and every stage of the process, that's what people say. Ah, oh, it looks like a boat. Oh, it finally looks like a boat. Oh, now it looks like a boat. <laughs> when the process started, Steve Dennett knew nothing about boat building, but making one from scratch, he estimated back then, would take him as much as 10 years. When we first started, and I was like, I'm gonna cut down the trees and build a boat, and everyone's like, you're crazy. And it was always, what about significant other? What about kids? What about career? What about, what about, what about, what about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we would talk to people who are in their 70s, their 80s. They would just go do it. Mm -hmm. You have this dream? Go do it. What are you waiting for? Do you think it's because they really couldn't powerful. do it anymore? Or because, why, why do you think the difference in the generations? I think they understand what a lifetime is and what you actually have the time for and what you're gonna look back on and wish you had or hadn't done. So in January 2016, Dennis, so that guy's a white oak, with no gray in the beard yet, started cutting trees. How was that? It was good. That was good? Made a splash. His friend Alex Creeter agreed to help and make videos. How did the day go today? It went. When it was done, they'd go sailing together. Creeter filmed as the logs became boards, and as those oak boards were steamed, down she goes, until they could be bent into their new shape. You have a matter of minutes to get them bent into the boat before they harden and become non-pliable again. And then you just fire in the, are they rivets? Or rivets, what? yep. So there are square copper rivets and we couldn't find them big enough anymore. We made a machine to make the rivets. <laughs> The plan to fund the project was for Creeter to make these videos to drum up donations through a crowdfunding site. So the first keel bolt is in, and yesterday we bolted up the stem here. But for a long time, the money didn't come. For two years, Dennett and Creeter had to keep their day jobs and scrounge for supplies. For the lead, we needed 12,000 pounds total. Where do you find 12,000 pounds of lead? You hunt for a year and a half. And where do you go hunting for lead? And I literally would ask every single person that I had a conversation with, do you know where I can get some lead? Hold on a second. If you ask 100 people that question, how many have a positive answer for you? One or two. <laughs> but one, sometimes and, you strike gold. Or lead. I, I talked to a, a woman and her daughter, and they're like, actually, yeah, my husband has a tire shop. So we went and picked up 2,000 pounds of wheel weights. Figuring out how to pour our own keel has been a trying part of this project. The video of melting that lead and pouring it into a keel went viral on YouTube, and Acorn to Arabella caught on. Donations in YouTube ad money let Dennett and Creeter quit their jobs and build full time. The attention also brought more and more help, paid and mostly unpaid. People like Dennett drawn to doing something exotic and hard for reasons they struggle to fully explain. K.P. Polella was supposed to start college, but took a job here instead. That's it. The confusing part is you had already tried boat building. Well, I love boat building. But then you left boat building. Correct. Because it didn't pay enough. That's right. But this pays much more than no. that? No, no. So that's where no. I'm trying to understand. That's fair. That's fair. It's going to start coming down a little bit. OK. Nine-year-old Aaron Waynes volunteers every Friday. I'll try my hardest. This was his first time using a disc sander. You want a Milky Way here? It's okay. locked. 76 year old Joe Damon arrived with four decades of experience on the Bridgeport machine that happened to be donated just before he came by. How do you find out about this? My wife spotted it. She says, It's in Granby. I said, Our Granby or Granby, Connecticut? She says, No, Granby, Mass. <laughs> Went out and jumped in my truck and came over. How long ago was this? Six years. Something like that. Something You've been like coming that. here for six years. Yeah. Those years haven't just transformed the wood, but the people working it. Creeter is about to be a married dad. He's already helping take care of his own father. He won't be voyaging with Dennett. Put our hearts and souls in this together for a long time, and then to, to have him step away is definitely hard. But, you know, I, th I think he made the right choice for sure. But as he'd been warned, devotion to the Arabella 
did make it hard for Dennett to find love. All of the time building the boat, I don't think any woman was past like two dates before they were like, yeah, I don't see myself on a boat. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm stepping out of this one. That is, until he met Robin Agricola, who had already been hoping to explore the world from a camper van. I was like, yeah, you know, I want to like live this nomadic lifestyle. And he's like, I see your van and I raise you a 38 foot wooden sailboat. If all goes as planned, they'll launch the boat in June. It's a small, cozy home. But Though Dennett won't captain it, at least at first. Yeah. Palella will. I'm not a sailor. I don't come from that background. We've skipped over this, haven't we? We have, yeah. Your sailing background is? Not existent at all. Yeah, I've never sailed. I maintain the first boat I sail on will be the one I built. I <laughs> sure hope you like it. I know you've heard that, but come yeah. on, sure hope you like it. I do too, and I think I will. And honestly, if I don't, I've learned so much building the boat. I have grown so much. I've met such amazing people and connections. And even if I hated sailing, I, I would not regret any of this. No regrets. That is our show. This is your life. I hope we just brightened it up a little bit, brightened up my day. I'm going to go look for some good news. You should as well. See you next time.